Okay, test, test. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. And hopefully my projection will work. So please tell me if you will not see what I will be typing. So hello, my name is Martin Stefanko. I work at Red Hat as principal software engineer. And today I am going to talk about Quarkus. So uh, here, is, here is a slight basically change in plans because I promised you a slideless session. This is why you are seeing myself generated in the terminal. But uh, I will have one slide at the end because uh, of different things. So currently, if I am actually writing a book called Quarkus in Action, which you can already read almost everything except for the last chapter uh, online. So here is the QR code that you can find. But on the if you will finish till the end, you will see a better, better one slide at the end. OK. so. Uh, if you want to find me anywhere on the internet, I am X Stefan everywhere. Since I will be basically typing for the whole duration of the lecture, I will need to sit. So hopefully that doesn't... Ah. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. So let's start with Quarkus. First thing, where uh, basically you can start with Quarkus is Quarkus.io, which will take you to this awesome site which contains everything that you will need for Quarkus. Basically, uh, what this session is focusing about is this developer joy. And hopefully, if you heard about Quarkus, you already heard about developer joy, so I want to show you today what this is. First thing, when you want to start with Quarkus, code.quarkus.io, where you can uh, basically generate your application. Uh, here, I just want to show, basically here you can get that generate button. If you are familiar with Spring, this is very similar to start.spring.io. Here, I just want to show you the list of individual extensions which you can include in your Quarkus application. And extension is basically a pluggable integration of some library of or some uh, functionality that you can include in your uh, application. Here, I just want to show you that this list, because this is not all, is extremely, extremely long. Like the possible integrations that you can do inside Quarkus are like very growing, very fast, very growing to the extent that we are not even able to keep up with it. So we created like now a separate uh, organization called Quarkiverse where anyone can basically maintain their own extensions because the main repository is over 1100 modules already. So it takes a long time to compile, but I prefer to use terminal for everything. So I will basically just create a new application with something which is called Quarkus CLI. This is a command line application that you can basically utilize to do everything basically with Quarkus. Uh, basically, there is never any magic. Quarkus is either Maven or Gradle project. What this tool will give you is just the option to not care about which build tool you are using in the background. So it will correctly translate to either Maven plugin invocation or into Gradle tasks. So it can also generate new applications. So if I can type Quarkus, if I type Quarkus create app and I will get my package and name of my service with minus X, I can select individual extensions. This is exactly the same thing if I would be ticking the boxes here and uh, clicking generate my application. Just I prefer to, oh, I thought that I did remove it, sorry. So this will basically do a REST call to that API and it will generate my application for me. So now I can open it in IDEA. Uh, out of the box, let's check the POM XML. What Quarkus is, is a normal Maven application where you will get a BOM which contains everything that you need for Quarkus. The individual extensions are actually dependencies, always starting with Quarkus prefix and they are in IO Quarkus uh, group. And you will get the most important part, Quarkus Maven plugin, where all Quarkus magic is en encapsulated and we don't need to really delve into it. But also I want to mention, because I have to mention it, there is this possibility of natives because with Quarkus, uh, if you are using extensions, we guarantee that you can compile your application to native just with minus P or minus D native. So the 
single most important thing for developer joy is uh, Quarkus's dev mode. And uh, to start dev mode, you can just type that Quarkus plugin, Quarkus dev. But uh, since I am more used to use this tool, this will basically do the same thing. Just in a Gradle project, it would translate to Gradle W uh, dev dev something, I don't remember what is it exactly, but basically it doesn't matter which project I'm using and since I'm switching from time to time, it's uh, I, I'm used to use this tool. Okay, so now I started Quarkus in dev mode. What this is, is basically you see that my application is really running and that profile dev is activated and some live coding is activated. So I know that inside my application, I actually have uh, generated, oops, not test. This very simple JaxRS resort, which is exposing on path slash hello, uh, basically just a simple message. So I can call it from my terminal, 8080 slash hello, and I will get hello from Quarkus REST. This is nothing fancy, but what that live coding is, is that I can dynamically, hello, mix it, change my code to just save it, and when I repeat the HTTP call into my application. It is automatically recompiled, restarted in the background in a few hundred of milliseconds. I am getting back my changes. Of course, like the, this is not something totally new, but uh, I personally don't know of any other framework that is doing this out of the box, so you don't need to configure anything on top of it. And actually, these kind of changes are going way further, which we are going to dive into in a minute. So. This terminal that you start with dev mode is actually interactive and you can see that you can press some commands down uh, here. So basically if I press H for more options so I can want to see everything, I can see basically what I can do inside this terminal. We will jump to system because I want to go in some uh, succession. So basically here, if I press S, I can force restart manually inside my application. So if I press S, the, basically the same thing happens if, if I would do HTTP call. But uh, of course, uh, you need to have some way how to tell Quarkus that you need to retrigger that reload. And uh, since not all ap applications which uh, you can write in Quarkus are exposing HTTP interface, then you have this option to trigger the reload manually. But there are also some different uh, triggers. Well, actually, one different trigger is, um, and maybe, maybe, maybe I will get to it in a minute. So uh, we can, uh, yeah, edit command line parameters are not very important for web applications, but because Quarkus is really easily compilable to native, many people choose to write the command line applications in Java and then just compile it into native. Uh, but what is very in interesting is this instrumentation-based reload, which I can toggle with I. So now we see that I toggled instrumentation-based reload and I will actually disable it because you will not see what I mean. So I will need to introduce some uh, state into my application, counter, and let's just here do counter increment and get. So now I just edit a counter. Now I again just reloaded my application, which is incremented with uh, every change. What will happen if I now change something else and I will, oops, what did I do? Okay, I, I have no idea how I like triggered different dev mode, sorry about that. Uh, so if I basically now trigger the restart of my application, I will lose all the state because my application is actually recompiled altogether. But if I press that I, and let me do some more, so we are at free request. If I press that I, I will trigger this instrumentation-based reload. And what this is, is basically now, if I basically change the code, so now we are at four requests, I will change it back to one exclamation mark. You will see that I'm not losing the state anymore because uh, what happened, and we can see here, Application restart was not required. We are just uh, replacing dynamically the bytecode of the classes in the running application. So if you are limiting your changes to basically inside of the method, we don't need to restart the whole Quarkus application. We can just dynamically replace the bytecode. Of course, like now I should be having this continuous all the time, but if I change something 
which is not possible to replace. And let me just, oops, sorry. Change the name to count, uh, maybe count uh, Rish. If I change something outside of the method, now Quarkus is not able to do this anymore. And somewhere here we should see that information, but I, yeah. Yeah, we don't need to like search for it, but you see that I lose the state because we need it to really trigger the full restart of the application. But again, if I just change something inside the method, the state is not lost, which is pretty powerful feature if you are working on a bigger application. Okay, so that would be that instrumentation based reload. What is very nice is also that you can just press uh, J inside this terminal to circle, debug, trace, and info level of uh, your application, which is also very useful when you are working with this dev mode. And basically that would be everything for these basic systems. And let's move to something which is more interesting. Also, please ask questions as I'm going, so you don't need to wait for end. Continuous testing. The second very, very important feature in Quarkus, so with R, I can resume testing, which is paused by default, and you see that Quarkus will run my test. And I will actually move this terminal now into the same uh, workspace so we can see it live. Uh, if I press R here, you see that I, can, I am running my test and that one test is failing because of course I didn't change the test, which is still testing the original message. But uh, what is uh, basically interesting is that if I go into the test and I will fix the test and hopefully I remember to what I change it to, hello from mix it, one exclamation mark, and I just save the test, you see that that test was automatically restarted and it's now passing. So basically, this is what is meant by continuous testing. You are just continuously writing your application and if you are breaking it, now if I just save this file, control S, you see that my test is automatically restarted and now it's again failing. So actually when I am working with Quarkus, I have this dev mode only on a side screen somewhere else and I'm not even looking at it, only you know, like on the periphery I'm seeing green change to red and I know that I broke something and I need to actually take some action on, based on it. So if I save it again, again the test is now passing. Uh, of course, one thing that always is a question is that I have hundreds of tests that are taking forever to execute. So what actually Quarkus does, and I will just now copy paste this uh, class into greeting resource two. I don't know what is happening. So I will expose it on hello two and Basically, that's everything that I need. And I will also copy paste this test. So we have several tests. So now I have all two tests passing, but you see that only one test was run. If I press R, it will still run all two tests. But if I change only one test and let's change again the first one and I will save that file, we should see, okay, now that two tests was run, but if I fix it, okay. Why are you not, oh yeah, I, I know why. I, I forgot to change the testing part, sorry. <laughs> so now I am in second test also testing that second class. And now I can show you what I wanted to show you, that only one test was run. So let's do it again because I, I screwed up. So if I just save this, we should see that only one test was run and one is still passing. So Quarkus is actually able to some extent detect which code you are changing and make very educated guess on which test it should actually run. So typically it's not all the tests. Okay, so uh, let me move this back here. So uh, also, oh, come on. Oh, I forgot how to fix this. This is my terminal and I, I forgot how to fix this. Ah, this, okay. So uh, basically you see that uh, if I if you enable this continuous testing, you have more options. You can just like rerun all the tests or run only failed tests toggle this broken only mode when you are just restarting what you are breaking. Uh, also, you can toggle the test output, which I didn't show. So if I press O and now restart the test, we can see that actually that tests are running new Quarkus applications, which are running on different ports. So your uh, dev mode is not the application that is being tested. There is a separate instance of your application running on the side just for the tests. Also, I can disable it, but you, you get the general idea. I guess like this is nothing uh, unexpected. 
but uh, basically this is extremely powerful feature if you know how to use it. And typically when I am really developing Quarkus application, I will just run this dev mode and I am continuously running it for the whole day because I don't need to stop. Uh, once I, also, uh, I run it for three days because I forgot to turn it off and it still worked. So like a uh, very powerful feature if it can work with you. And also something which I didn't show well, now, inside, uh, basically, here I am inside the same directory that, which I generated. So that Quarkus tool can actually work uh, also with the extensions that I was mentioning. So ext is just short for extension. If I just press ext, it will list all the extensions which I have installed in this application. But with minus i, I can list all the installable extensions, which is that extremely long list of extensions which I can install. But it can also it will also tell me how to add an extension into my system. So just to demonstrate what that is on slash uh, q slash health i currently don't have anything so this is a 404 just you need ah, ah come on they needed to create a really nice page for you if, you will believe me it's 404 <laughs> uh so uh if i want to like for instance add that uh, health functionality for kubernetes all i need to do is quarkus extension add and i know that the name is small right health you can also play with like filtering and finding these kind of extensions you can also find it online on that site i just don't have time to do it now so i i already know the name if i add that extension which i purposely delete it from my local repository before uh, this session, you see that it also didn't kill my dev mode and it downloaded that artifact, it edited it into my application and my dev mode is still running. And now if I repeat that queue held, I am already having that functionality which is brought by uh, that extension. One other thing uh, that it, you also get here, and we are moving this to this HTTP, is this, if I press D, I will open something which is called dev UI in my browser. So I will press D, you see that my first workspace is highlighted. And if I go into that IDE, we see that this is something which Quarkus did for me only in dev mode. This is only like basically a graphical interface into the dev mode. You cannot use this in production, but it brings a lot of features which are extremely helpful. For instance, that small right health is already adding here uh, like some graphical UI and something like that, but it's not that uh, in interesting. Basically, any extension can get any information into this UI that they want. Like I will uh, check this arc, which is basically the CDI implementation where you can, for instance, list all the bins inside your application. So I can list also like all my classes which are found in my application. And one very uh, good uh, feature. So I will go into greeting resource test. I, my ID is in greeting resource test. And if I click here, greeting resource, the Jaxares resource, you will see that my 19 workspace is now highlighted and from the dev UI, Quarkus found the, that I'm using IDEA and it located that file on, uh, in my IDEA, which is also very nice. You can also uh, play with the graphs. For instance, you have here these removed components and you can see the number 69, which I don't really have time to dive into, but if you want to talk about uh, build time and runtime separation concerns in Quarkus and why this is extreme performance boost, we can uh, talk about that later. But uh, here you can find 69 classes uh, uh, which are basically only needed for some kind of initialization or basically some initial processing. And basically Quarkus, because of that build time possibility, will execute uh, all that all their task at build time and when you do Maven clean package. And they are never actually included in your final produce jar. So the 69 classes which will never make it to your production system because with other frameworks, you need to bring them and you need to execute all the tasks every time that you run the application. But Quarkus can do this uh, when basically you are compiling. Okay, so uh, one other thing which I have here, for instance, because I don't want to come back there, because I edit open API extension, I will, for instance, get integrated uh, Swagger in this. Any extension can get anything that they want to. So this would be that extensions. Uh, here on the left side, just because I have it very zoomed, I don't know how to open it more, but this is configuration. You, you will believe me. Basically, you can list all possible configuration values that you can configure in your particular application. So if you add more extensions, new properties will probably jump up here. So you don't need to really figure out like what 
what kind of values you are after because everything for Quarkus is here. And also your uh, own uh, uh, basically configuration because Quarkus is using same module for its own configuration and for your values too. So here I can search in for something like for instance, Quarkus log darken, which if I change and I will just click this save button, property was saved, but what happened, it also triggered the live reload of my dev mode. So it automatically applied that property to my running application. And of course, this is not something which is, you know, like in the flight or somewhere in the memory, this, this will actually write it directly into your uh, configuration. So it's like basically only a graphical UI into your processing. If I change it back, this will not trigger the reload because from IDE we don't have the same trigger. So I need to trigger the reload manually with S to basically bring the changes or make an HTTP request into my application. But like uh, you already saw at least three different ways how you can trigger different reloads and possibly there are more which I don't know about, but that, that I don't know about. Here you have some information about the endpoints. It's not that uh, interesting. You also have the UI into that continuous testing. So if you are graphical person, because I am not, that doesn't mean that you <laughs> are, basically you have your options. And also here I can click this button to actually get the terminal also inside the browser if I prefer to. So it's, you, you, you have really, many possibilities how to play with it. And to this we will get later, and this is not something that I want to dive into because that's a little advanced topic. So, dev services. Okay, so now I would like to develop a slightly more real application, so I will add a database. Again, just to save time. Oh, come on. Quarkus extension at Hibernate. I will add free extension, basically Hibernate with uh, Facade, which is called Panache, a driver for Postgres, and something which is called REST Data Panache, but I will explain that when we will get there. But it's still Hibernate. I am just adding Hibernate with Postgres, uh, basically in short. Again, you see that it triggered the live reload of my application, and we should see here somewhere that I have that extension added into my uh, uh, application. So if I now press H, I should have a new section that which appeared here, which is called Dev Services. Dev services are basically automated integration of more or less mostly test containers, but not always. Some things are done uh, in uh, different ways. But basically, if you have uh, basically an intention to use some remote service or some third party dependency and you don't configure it, Quarkus will make uh, again an educated guest. And what it does, it will, put an PS start a Postgres for me because I added a JDBC driver for Postgres, but I didn't configure Postgres. So it went ahead, started the Postgres container on my machine. And actually if I press, uh, where is it? C here. So if I press C inside this terminal, you will see that it started this container, which is exactly the same container and it injected configuration, like for instance, JDBC URL directly for that started application. So my application is now already connected to a Postgres container and I can write basically the real application against a real database. Of course, this will only again happen in dev mode and it's not limited to databases. This will, sorry, this will also work with uh, Kafka, with uh, like transactional managers. Uh, it, it, it's really to re hard to remember, go ahead. Yes, it will basically run a Red Panda container or basically there are also streams here and one other, but it will basically start the broker and automatically wire your application into Kafka. And what is even better, because I will be not showing it here, if you start multiple applications that want to communicate with Kafka, they can detect that there is already a dev service Kafka and they will all connect to the same Kafka. <laughs> so it's very easy to basically also use this to learn technologies. Okay. Uh, uh, so basically, now I can basically start developing my application. I just reload my Maven project and I can start creating my entities. Uh, so I will create entity arranger. So I will be using that Panache framework, which is really just a different way how you can basically write normal Hibernate, normal JPA. Just uh, 
the Hibernate team itself think that the JPA is a little bit too much for most use cases. So they came up with this idea of active record where basically I can just extend the entity. It still needs to be annotated as entity, but basically I can now write my, that's our name, civil name. I can write my the properties as public and this is it. This is my full JPA. JPA entity, just because Quarkus is doing a lot at the build time, we can also generate and basically transform your code or generate bytecode and transform your code. So what will happen at build time, this will be actually transformed to like full JPA entity. These fields will be made private. We will generate getters and setters. And basically we will rewrite or accesses to these public fields as to use that generated getters and setters. Again, I will not have time to show this, but if you will, if you want to see this and you don't believe me, just find me after the session. Uh, so this is more or less my entity. If I would now basically just restart my application, I should be already able, but I don't know how much time I have, 20 minutes, maybe I can. So if I now try to connect, oh, I have the same port, that's good. No. Okay, my PSQ doesn't work for me, so I will not show this to you, but you, you will believe me that I, I should have already now Avenger entity and let's create a resource so I have access to it normally. So I will create Avenger resource, not in the entity package, sorry. And basically I will really just quickly create slash Avenger and I will create only a single endpoint which will return all Avengers. With this, and let, let's move it to the default thought, with this panache, with this active record panache, because with panache you can also write repositories if you are familiar with Spring, but with this active record what you do, it's called active record, so all my operations are actually on my record class. So I have a bunch of static methods which are coming from that panache entity, like for instance, list all or find by ID or delete, count, etc. directly encapsulated in my entity. So if I want to do a select star from a database, I will just call static method list all. What I didn't show already uh, also is that inside this panache entity, you will out of the box get a very simple ID defined, but if you want to override your own ID strategy, you can extend this panache entity base and you will get the ba basically the same thing. This is, this is just adding that ID because like mostly if, if, if you care about ID, you know why you are caring about ID. Okay, so now if I call HTTP 8080 slash Avenger, I should get back an empty list because I have nothing inside my database. So uh, there are several ways how you can populate the database, like similarly as in the other frameworks, you can create just a file in uh, resources, which in Quarkus is called import SQL, where you can just pass really SQL, which is executed on startup. In dev mode, if I now, Retrigger again my live reload. You see that I already have data. In dev mode, this is automatically applied, but uh, if you want to bring it into production, you need to configure it. But uh, like typically you don't want to, but for my demo, I will need to. Let's do also one more method. Let's do post and let's go create. And this will return Avenger. Yeah, that's okay. Let's also do it on the root path. If I want to create a new Avenger, of course, I need to take the Avenger as uh, an input. Uh, and basically, uh, I can just take that Avenger, which I received, it's, if it's the entity class, and I will just call persist, and it's persisted. Of course, one other thing, I need to run it inside the transaction. And basically, that should be everything, I hope. So if I now do HTTP post and I have prepared basically a JSON, which is sending uh, the correct data, so it saves some time, of course, an error, which is great because, because I can show you that of course, this will not kill my death mode because it's an error. So now I fix my error and I'm just continuously writing my code. And of course I will get my Moon Knight inside my checks. Okay. 
But this is cumbersome and often unnecessary because like if you want to create a CRUD resource, you are typically doing always the same thing. So I will remove it. And I will create an interface now, Avenger resource, an interface, which will just extend panache entity resource, which will take my entity and the type of my ID, which is that long from uh, uh, that panache entity. And this is that third extension which I included, which is called Res Data Panache. Basically, this will basically give you just a, basically a way how to skip a lot of this processing. Of course, you can still like change it and modify it to your needs, but uh, basically I will still get all endpoints which I would like to, and basically that would be better to show in that swagger. Where is Swagger, 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 here is Swagger. What it does, it will generate basically an implementation of that interface which is containing everything that you need for CRUD. So basically for very little code, you will get a full CRUD uh, resource. And of course, like that post is exactly the same. So like basically exactly the same thing. I just don't need to type in manual. Okay. We still have some time, so I will do also security. So if I want to do security again, I need to do an extension, OIDC, if I type it correctly. So of course, this will sometimes not work as expected, but that's like only a single foo. Okay, I don't know what I lost now. So. Of course, nothing is perfect. Sometimes, and OIDC for some reason, which I still need to figure out, sometimes doesn't work as I would like it to work. So hopefully, and hopefully I edited that extension, I edited it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Because like, again, if I do that Quarkus extension add, it will just add a Maven dependency. So if you modify POM XML directly, it will also trigger that live reload. But hopefully, Yes, now it works. You see that it started another dev service. And actually, if I press C here, we should see now that I have Postgres, but I also have Keycloak for my security. Of course, security is something that you need to configure, unfortunately. So just to save some time again, I will just generate a bunch of configuration. I will also generate Postgres, but let's now focus on this second part, which is configuring the security. So I am pointing it to uh, not this, not this. I, I am just configuring my client. I am configuring secret and I'm specifying basically the authenticated path to everything. Uh, but like this is quite important is that basically you can see that here now I will be overriding and maybe I will restart the application to show that it works. So on, let, let me do it in incognito in the localhost 8080 slash Avenger. Oh, of course, client not found. What? Live demos. Gods are not on my side. Okay. Okay, let's try it one more time because I, I really have no idea what happened now because this should be creating a key cloak which is integrated with whatever I have inside that application. But maybe because I didn't have that configuration when I started it, it didn't configure it correctly. Well, let's let just try it again. But like this is again a use case which you are not going to run into that much because this is only configured once. So hopefully now on localhost 8080 slash avenger. Now I am redirected correctly, intercepted, redirected to Keycloak, and if I log in, I will get back my application. Okay, so uh this OIDC authentication URL and JDBC URL, you can see that I am configuring in something which is called percent prod. Percent prod is uh, basically a config profile which you get out of the box. Uh, so basically Quarkus will allow you to prefix any configuration value with percent prod, percent test, or percent dev, or even any custom profile that you will come up with. And uh, this property will be basically uh, used or uh, by Quarkus only in that particular execution of that Quarkus application. So prod by default is uh, basically jar, uh, native or uh, container, so built artifact. 
test is test and uh, basically dev is dev mode. This is, for instance, why I need to use this at test to basically disable that authentication for my test so my tests are still passing. But if I would remove this percent prod from this property, so I would actually use in dev mode uh, basically the connection URL to some service, Quarkus will take this as a pre precedence basically, and we are expecting that you are maintaining your own basically third party service. So this is why I need to have this percent prod at least for these two services, because if I would not, Quarkus will not start the uh, dev services, that uh, containers for me in the background. Okay. So hopefully now I implemented my whole application and now bear with me because like OIDC is security and security is sometimes problematic, but you can imagine that I didn't have to stop the dev mode at all if I uh, wouldn't do, be, be doing security. But in general, now I can compile my application and this is just a really Maven clean package and I can run my real production and sorry this is docker run, run. Uh, my real production uh, system so i will run postgres and since we did also key cloak i will run also key cloak and this is nothing uh, fancy this is just like correctly configured the realm and uh, basically postgres running on my system and I can run my application in production mode with Java minus jar target. And of course, now it will be connecting really to my container, which is my real key cloak and my real database on the correct ports. So if I, hopefully if I run it correctly, I should get basically the same application now already running in production mode. Now this is the real key cloak and I am getting back the same application. So. What I basically wanted to demonstrate is basically dev mode is really just dev mode. You are continuously developing your application. When you are finished, you need to really step and basically create your own configuration, basically put it together. For instance, here I am also misusing that import SQL to use it also in that production system. And basically uh, what I just want to really highlight is that this dev mode will give you all the tools that you need to basically continuously develop and you will really stop only when you are going to push basically your final work. Okay, so we still have some time. So what if I would like to put this now into like a real production system and I have prepared OpenShift somewhere here, which is also having this uh, Postgres and Kikok already configured. So if I want to put it into OpenShift, I need to log in into OpenShift. And this is by the way, uh, like free version of uh, OpenShift that you can also try if you would like to try OpenShift called uh, Red Hat OpenShift Sandbox. So if I just log into, in my terminal into OpenShift and come on. Okay, my computer is making fun of me. Okay, oh, internet is all. Okay. Uh, so uh, of course, anything with Quarkus is not there by default. So if I want to use OpenShift, Quarkus extension at OpenShift. This will add a new extension. And if I now compile my application, because no one really likes to write YAMLs for Kubernetes and for OpenShift, myself included, what Quarkus does, it will actually in target Kubernetes generate also Kubernetes resources because that's transitive dependencies, but it will generate also OpenShift resource, which is the full YAML for my application, which I can directly take and apply in my uh, basically cluster. Of course, uh, for that, I would need to have somewhere pushed my image. So uh, OpenShift comes with a really nice functionality, which is called source to image, where you basically can uh, basically send the jar to OpenShift and OpenShift will build the container inside the OpenShift to deploy. So if I want to take this application into OpenShift, all I need to do, and I, I will be cheating, so I will save some, well, maybe I, I will not. So I will run that same command because I want to skip this, do not waste time. I will just say Quarkus OpenShift deploy equals true. And basically, it will find out that I'm connected to OpenShift. It will find out that like I didn't create or configure any image build myself. So it will default to that S2I and you can see that it's already started built inside my cluster. And if I go back into my cluster into builds, 
I should see here that my Avenger service is already running. And if I would go inside, I would see exactly the same logs which I'm seeing here. So in a few, hopefully, seconds, because depending on how fast the internet is, uh, I will get my application uh, running in OpenShift with really minimal effort. OK, this is more or less everything that I wanted to show you. So we will not really wait for this because it, internet is really slow, but you will believe me that I will get the same uh, application because I was testing it in the morning. This is why I forgot to remove it. So that would be more or less everything from me. And uh, I just uh, want to show you here that basically for this conference, I got a 45% uh, discount for my book. So if you will use that code or scan that URL, you can get a 45% discount for like next month or so. Uh, if you want to learn more about Quarkus, like in that book, we are going into way, way more detail and it will be probably very long book. So <laughs> hopefully you will enjoy. I will also push uh, this code that I typed here into this URL on my uh, GitHub. So we will be able to find it later. And uh, I will take some questions if there are some. <laughs>